Hey guys, this is Slyman, and today's video we'll be reviewing the Celestron Advanced BX 6 inch Newtonian telescope. This is a really sweet telescope, I really, really like it. So uh, let's jump right in. Okay, just some quick specs. The uh, C6N telescope, the 6 inch Newtonian, has an aperture of 150 millimeters, a focal length of 750 millimeters, and a total focal ratio being f5. Comes with a 6x30 finder scope, which actually works pretty good. A 1.25 inch focuser here, one 11 pound counterweight, uh, the optical tube weighs 10 pounds, and the tripod weighs 18 pounds. So uh, those are just some quick specs for you. Just to go over the features real quick here, here is your azimuthal knob. So to adjust the actual mount and altitude and azimuth, you'll place these knobs for uh, azimuth, and that will actually move the entire mount for when you're polar aligning. And then here is your elevation knobs where actually cranking one of these will move the mount as you can see that. Or loosening this one and pushing this horn will raise it. Then you also have your latitude scale right here obviously so you can see where you're at. You have two auxiliary ports, a hand controller port, and an auto guider port. And then uh, you also have a declination port that you have to connect so that the motors will have been connected. Something I really enjoy about the mount is how thick the tripod legs are. They are two inches in diameter, stainless steel. They are really good legs on this tripod, really, really solid base. And that's one of the benefits of the Advanced VX, I think, is the, the tripod is actually really good. Here are the right ascension and your declination clutches. I'm not a big fan of these clutches. Um, I'll get to that a little bit more in a minute, but uh, there's your right ascension, type that down, and then there's your declination clutch as well. And I will talk about why I don't like these. So the reason I don't like the clutches is they're a little bit gummy. And what I mean by that is if you're trying to balance your, uh, your telescope and you're on your right ascension here, you make a T, When I let go on a normal equatorial mount, you're going to immediately see some weight issues, most likely, unless you have it marked where it needs to go, uh, the counterweight that is. You're going to immediately see some play here or some play here. The Advanced VX clutches are a little bit gummy in that you kind of have to play with it to find out where the weight issues are. And that's one thing I really didn't like was it is a little bit tricky to get your telescope balanced properly. Um, and it's the same for the, the declination axis as well. You let go and nothing really happens. You have to play with it, see, see which end feels heavier. And that wasn't something that I was really liking. It's a little bit annoying, but I mean, they are smooth, but when you're trying to balance you have to play with them a little bit. Not, I wasn't the biggest fan of that, still not. That's okay though, it's something that I've learned to deal with and it's, not, it's really not that big of a deal. Right, so here we have the finder scope and the focuser. The focuser is your typical 1.25 inch focuser, but what's really nice about it is that it focuses a DSLR and it focuses an eyepiece. No additional adapters or anything required. Um, so here's obviously the adapter for the eyepiece. It's a 1.25 inch, will just fit right in there and just screw down obviously. And then if you're wanting to put on a DSLR like a Canon or a Nikon, if you have a T-ring, you simply uh, unscrew this uh, 1.25 inch adapter that comes standard on the telescope. And then you can screw on your DSLR right onto these threads and then just like that you're ready to image. You'll have a little bit of coma, but you are ready to image. You're on an equatorial mount, which is key and you have a DSLR which is all another nice feature. So I, I mean the focuser really isn't that bad, it's a little bit sloppy in the play, but to be honest it, it really isn't that bad at all. Once you find where you like your focuser, go ahead and lock it down nice and tight and that way you, uh, it won't move your focus with your camera on, at least it shouldn't. Now locking this down in and of itself might move your focus a tiny bit, but you can just adjust it to compensate for that. I love the finder scope on this telescope and it's just a typical Celestron 6x30 finder scope that this comes with. The, uh, the uh, 8 inch Newtonian comes with a 9x50 
it's quite a bit larger and I actually prefer this one. It's a lot easier to find what you're looking at and it's light, whole telescope's light. I really, really like the six inch Newtonian. Looking down the optical tube, you do have spider vanes to hold the secondary mirror in place and those are going to produce diffraction spikes in your images and even in the brighter stars when you're looking through your telescope. It's really neat, you get those little spikes. And then obviously you have your primary mirror down at the bottom. The light will come down through the top here, travel down, hit the bottom, the primary mirror, come back down, arc off the secondary mirror, and go into your eyepiece. So that is the Newtonian, a very, very basic design by Isaac Newton, and it still works today just fine. Let's talk about the optical tube itself a little bit. It provides really, really good views. I, the first night I had this telescope, I looked at Venus, and Venus was really sharp, and it looked really good through the, uh, the six inch Newtonian here. Imaging does a fantastic job, absolutely fantastic job. Uh, I'll run a picture of the uh, triangulum galaxy that I took here, and uh, that was just with this telescope, this mount, no filters or anything. That is just 100% triangulum galaxy in Christmas light, light pollution. So you can see that does a really, really good job. You will get a little bit of coma, which is a stretching of the stars at the ends of the field of view. Um, and that's due to the mirror being curved and then the light coming up, bending. And so it's not, it's not, uh, it's a little bit stretched. And a coma corrector will fix that. That's one problem with the six inch Newtonian is you really can't incorporate a coma corrector unless you switch out the entire focusing unit. So that's a little bit of a pain for some people. Um, but for $900, you get the advanced VX mount and the 6 inch Newtonian. I would do this every time. Even if I was just buying the advanced VX mount, I would still get the Newtonian with it. Every time. It, I, it is that quality built, it's that good. For $100 extra dollars, as of uh, April 2014, I would definitely buy that. You also have a piggyback ring here on the back. Piggyback a a DSLR on the back for wide field views if you'd like to do that. So for the, the, the money, I would definitely, definitely recommend the 6 inch Newtonian if you have a $100 extra that you can spend. Collimating it really isn't that hard if you have a laser collimator. It's a, you get a good finder scope, the focuser works good, everything works good, gives you good views, good images. It's DSLR ready, I mean what more can you ask for? If I could recommend one product to power the mount, it would be this uh, 18780. It's the 5 amp AC adapter. And you really want this for your Advanced VX, your uh, Nexstar power adapters really just don't give enough power to do a good job to power the mount. Um, you do get a, a, a AC car adapter or a cigarette lighter adapter when you buy the telescope. So you, if you have a 12 volt battery, you can use that in it. But if not, if you want to use AC power, get yourself a 5 amp power adapter. Okay, so to power the mount, I'm going to insert my AC adapter here and push it up as far as I can and then lock it in. So if I trip over it, I'm not going to lose power. Now go ahead and flick it on. Your hand controller will light up. It'll say advanced yet VX, press enter to begin the alignment. You have a series of choices. Um, obviously it's going to tell you to set your mount to the index marks, which are just the two little marks on the, the uh, declination and the right ascension axis. And then it will tell you you can either do a two star alignment or a, a uh, solar system alignment. And what's great about the two star alignment is it actually points into the area of the stars based on your location and what time you put in and whatnot, so you'll actually be pretty close to your alignment stars right from the get-go. And then I always put in four extra calibration stars before I begin my all-star polar align. So I'm just gonna do a fake alignment here, and you can see if I align to Capella, it will move automatically towards it. I don't have to slew it. All right, so I've done a generic alignment. You can hear the telescope tracking in the background. I'm just gonna take you real quick through some of the menus here. We have the solar system menu. Shows up Jupiter, Uranus, the moon, 
uh, Mars would come up eventually. You have stars, constellations, double stars, name stars, SAO, variable stars, asterisms. You have deep sky named objects, the new general catalog, a bell, Caldwell, CCD objects, IC, Messier. Um, then you have your identify button down below. You have a sky tour, you have scroll, motor speeds, um, a menu. And that's what I would like to get into because the Nexstar Plus controller has 40,000 objects in it. Um, but compared to the Nexstar SE series, you get some additional features. You get a, let's see, PEC, which is um, periodic error correction. I actually believe that is under utilities. and PEC, and so you get periodic error correction with the advanced VX mount. That's, that's pretty awesome. Basically what that does is it records the play in your gears, and then after it records, it will, it will figure out how it needs to adjust to compensate for that, give you a better, a better tracking. Then you can obviously change your tracking rates, your modes, how you wanna do that. Um, so that's just the hand controller. All right, so let's slew to some different stuff, just show you how it works. Let's go to the moon. Now I'm sure the moon is right there, right? <laughs> um, but once you're done, if you hit object info, you can get at a distance of almost 240,000 miles, it will, it will uh, give you some info on the object. So that's pretty cool too. Um, and if you're properly polar aligned, your mount will only need to track in right ascension after its declination is locked on. Alright guys, well that's my review of the Celestron Advanced VX 6 inch Newtonian telescope. I hope you enjoyed it. It is a great telescope, definitely worth the money. Thanks so much for watching.